Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JT O'Sullivan. Today, Trevor Lawrence versus the Chiefs Divisional Playoff. We're diving into it, breaking it down. Fired up for this one. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. So before we dive into the video, quick reminder about the Quarterback School Patreon community. This group is the foundation, the bedrock of this channel. Not only is it a great way to support the channel, and it's never been cheaper to become a member, you also get a bunch of additional content. I'm really trying to create the environment of what it's like in an NFL quarterback room. So all sorts of detail, nuance about not only the quarterback position, but high-level football. So if you dig the channel, you will love the Quarterback School Patreon community. Get over there, become a member. I appreciate it. As for this video, let's get into it. So the first third down of the game for the Jaguars is a tough one. Really the Chiefs scheme them up here up front. We've got six-person protection. They only technically bring five but get a free runner. So really outstanding scheme. Nice job from Trevor Lawrence not taking a sack. Probably a poor decision to throw that thing back across the middle of the field. He misses the throw. You know, if he makes that throw, it's an outstanding play. But really this is more about getting out-schemed and then just a bad decision on the back end. But you can see there, that throw is there back across the body. It's a dangerous throw. You know, he puts it where he wants to as opposed to behind him. You know, it's a really nice third down conversion. It's probably a little bit dangerous early on in the game. But the bones of this play is the pass protection. And again, so much starts with pass protection in the league, especially on third down. Let's talk exactly what's going on. This is six-person pass protection. So we've got the back included in the pass protection unit. That's six. The center looks like he's going to the right. Okay, so when he goes to the right, we'll say he's going here. So these three are the right guard, right tackle, and then the back is coming straight off the edge. Okay, so we've really got these three down here. If all three of these blitz, theoretically, we're going to have to throw hot. And the hot option looks like a pretty good option, especially on third and three, right here on a little short end. So if the ball, if you were hot, let's say all three of these guys blitzed, you'd say, okay, I got to get the ball out right here on time, three in it, let it rip. But what happens here, scheme-wise, is they take a little bit of a gather step. So they come up and then he drops. So technically he doesn't, but he engages the guard. Okay, so the guard has to step here. Well, then when the defensive end and the backer type both blitz, the only way you sort this thing out, and it's tough as hell, is to ask the guard to fan out to the end and has to tackle the fan out to the backer. Well, that's really hard when they have to step down together to block the tackle and the defensive end and then readjust and re-fan back out to the end and to the backer. And so what ends up happening is everybody gets it but the left tackle. The left tackle can't get all the way out and now we've got a free runner with them only blitzing five, right? That's pretty sweet defensively if you can get a free runner only rushing five with six in the pass protection. So they get you. You nod it up. I think the only thing maybe you could say here if you're Trevor Lawrence is to let it rip down here to the bottom. You know, take three, one, two, three, throw it. You know, and, and again, easier said than done. I get it. I got a clicker. Probably don't want to make that throw back across the middle of the field. What could be an absolute disaster. But just watch the left guard, left tackle try to sort this thing out. It's tough. See how they set in? So they set correctly. They're running. You can see that the left tackle probably thinks he's getting a game here with this angle from the defensive end. The right guard is setting on the tackle type, the interior player. Well, once he drops off, now they have to readjust, readjust out, out. And that's just too hard with the dude burning off the edge in his scooter helmet. Okay, tough ask. Can't get it done. Trevor Lawrence does a nice job adjusting with the sack. I'll let it play one time in real time just so you can see how fast it is for the left tackle. Uh, can't get back out. And then we just don't want to do this. Get a little fortunate. Get a fortunate a few times in this game. Next one here. This is beautiful scheme from Dougie P. Touchdown pass up top. Putting a wide receiver in the backfield. Somehow get an edge player covering a man-to-man -man down the field, which is LOL on many levels. But I love the fact that Trevor Lawrence gets it. He's got a free runner in his face. Free runner on the backside, I should say. Left guard gets confused. Puts it up and down. Beautiful touch. Really nice, accurate ball. So, first of all, you know, this is not defensive school by any means. But if it was, 
anytime a wide receiver is in the backfield, usually red alert. Okay. Something's up unless it's, you know, Debo, that's it. And even then something's up. So to be able to say, Hey, we're going to run a rail from the backfield with a wide receiver and somehow get a, an end type player, a guy who got his hand on the ground to try to peel and run with him, <laughs> you know, oh, feeling pretty good about that matchup. In addition, Love the kind of the path here to make it difficult. You know, I think most people would think if you're going to play this play and it was man, you, you would think that he's going to run with the number one and the backer type is going to run with the number two, just counting the eligibles outside in one, two. That doesn't work. Instead, they get a peeler and works out beautifully. And again, get a little fortunate with the pass pro issues on the backside, not to get home. But that's really nice touch. Again, you can see how that the route by the number one kind of operates as a rub. Just enough to not let that backer get over the top. Nice touchdown pass. Outstanding scheme. Great formation effing someone. But again, tough to have your hand on the ground, even when the backer tells you, hey, you're you're gov you're covering him. Go get him, buddy. Tough. Beautiful throw. Nice touchdown. Next one here, second and long. This is a tough sack for me. This is more on Trevor Lawrence. Every sack tells its own story. But right here, it sure looks like he kind of skips through some potential open eligibles down the field. And again, easy for me to say with a clicker and a marker. But I think you can see here just the, the way he's playing this from our right to left. No. Back across the middle. No. You can see him kind of turn it down. So whatever he's looking at to the right, and we'll look at it from the wide. No. Back to the middle right there. He looks to go throw that thing. It's there. We got to throw that ball right there. So for whatever reason, he turns it down, we get sacked. So what's happening down the field? Now you could make the argument potentially that he's not getting through this read for me. And what I mean by that is without being in their room and knowing what their read is, let's just draw up the routes here. This sure looks like a deep out. This looks like an in. And then we get this little like underneath juke or jerk. If, if I'm looking at this concept and they're going to look over here first, so you can definitely tell that his eyes at the back are looking to the left first, it's most likely kind of one, two, and or you could say one over here, back backside, three, four. And so to me, I, I think you're going to be able to see here, he probably skips the deep outer corner. So to me, this is there. In addition, this is definitely there. Now, you could say, hey, bro, easy for you to say with the marker. Okay, it's middle field closed and it's man. Okay, so now middle field closed man and you got those same routes. What should be there? Well, you're going to get inside leverage here, right? He's inside leverage on a short end. That's going to be tough. He's going to be, should be outside leverage with the divider rules on this deep out. That's going to be tough. We're going to get an in here versus outside leverage. That should be there. Right? Outside leverage versus an in. Middle field closed. Man. So just by understanding the coverage, you should probably have a good understanding that this ball should go to the end, to the bottom. Boom. There it is. Now, I would love to see that in come flatter. You know, it's not wide-ass open, but it's definitely open. And then if for some reason you trust it up top to the number two, you probably throw it to him too on a little burst out. Again, I get it. It's easy when you get the ability to rewind and slow down and look, but you can see him. No, throw it right there. Boom, throw it. It's there. We miss it. Next one here. This is one of those ones to me. Really nice throw from Trevor Lawrence. You can see the procedure, deep play action shot down the field. We just can't hook it up. Now it's a little bit unique how they get there with the operation at the line of scrimmage. Looks like they probably have two plays called, but this is a beautiful deep ball. You can see him kind of alert there. Most people call that an alert. We're going to big play action shot. We're going to crow hop into this thing and drop a dime down the field. Now, to me, this is a drop. It's not an easy catch, but it hits him in the forearms, right? It's not a perfect throw. He can't run through it, but man, that's got to be caught. That is a massive play. Trevor Lawrence drops it right in there for him, and we can't hook it up. Now, when I say a little bit unique for me, you know, if you're going to run what ends up being kind of this like deep post over the top with a, we'll call it a deep curl here. Most people, I would say, well, I shouldn't even say that. Without knowing the bones of this play, 
I don't know. I think oftentimes this route is kind of a TBD, meaning essentially you run, you want to run the post, but if someone's over the top of you, you kind of curl it up too. So you don't have a wasted route. But right here, verse middle field open. So two safeties, which essentially kind of looks like bracket once this thing gets going as far as these two are looking up this number one. And then these two at the bottom are looking up this number one to the bottom. So you end up running this verse double coverage, but it really doesn't matter because it's so deep. They're not you know, covering in and out all the way down the field. And so you can see it's a little bit of a faith kind of play action throw. Up top, that sure looks like bracket. Down here, if you're looking at the safety at the bottom, he's certainly inside looking like they're bracketing. And then they just run right by him. You know, I, I love the decision. I love how they get there. This is one of those ones defensively, they just don't think you're going to do it. And if you have the capacity to throw it over the top of the coverage, it's always there. You just have to be able to hook it up. These are low probability throws. But a really nice job from Trevor Lawrence and Dougie P and company giving them an opportunity for a massive play down the field. Got to hook it up. Got to. Next one, third and seven. Really nice completion to the number two down here to the bottom on an in. Again, we catch middle field closed. Man, you should have all sorts of in-breaking runaways versus that, even though they're trying to show or faux pressure here. When they drop out of this thing, we're going to be able to have opportunities to run away from leverage. So what I'm talking about, yeah, they bring pressure up top, but it's blocked up. So we're able to kind of have these runaway opportunities, and this is where the ball ends up going. Now you're going to say, how does he get outside leverage? Well, he's this defender right here is fake blitzing. So when he runs out, he gets to the outside, he gets to his correct leverage. So he's showing, he's giving you the inside because you've got this middle field safety. I think it's paired with a post. And an in down here to the bottom. So if that in wasn't there, you could have this in runaway. You got this post runaway. It's probably some element of alert one, two. And then if you like the one-on-one -on -one up top, take the one-on-one -on -one up top. But again, you can see it, it kind of works itself out to really kind of fall into the leverage that we want because that DB type is running after his fake pressure, faux pressure. But a great job from Trevor Lawrence. Nice job from Kirk being able to catch this thing for a nice third medium conversion. Play on time. Put it right on him. On the body. On the break. You know, one of my least favorite things in the world is the old jump to catch a ball on your chest. But whatever. Nice conversion. Let's go. Next third down here. Third and two. They're going to work the... This is really a third down for four points because we're going to miscommunicate on what I'm going to call an option or a choice to the number three up top. And it's there. This is unfortunate. It looks like they're just not on the same page and just the precision of these choice routes here is really a thing that takes a lot of time, a lot of patience. So when we get this bunch and the number three right here is running the choice. So to me, a choice is just a, an option. So he can usually come up, settle down right there, run out, run in, and some teams allow you to go to the slant or to the post. Okay, but the easy play, the play that you want most often is just settle up, especially in zone. So usually teams will have some iteration of a bunch check. So you get this bunch formation here, and it doesn't really matter who's who in the zoo. There will be an opportunity for some sort of runaway leverage for that third eligible coming out. So to me, he just needs to come up and settle right there, and we got to put it on his inside number. To me, there's a lot of wasted movement, not my favorite route. He's kind of drifting and drifts himself covered. So again, you know, we're not in their wide receiver room. We're not in their quarterback room. They're installed to know exactly what they're asking him to do. But to me, that that's really hard to play quarterback like that. When you get your guy to the top right there, I'm expecting him to turn in. You know, they're they're almost boxing that thing. And if you're gonna go in to stay friendly flat. Not, not not to drift. So, you know, I haven't been a whole lot of places that will allow you to, if you're going to come in on these choices, to come in and drift. You know, you don't want to drift upfield. You want to stay what a lot of people call like quarterback friendly or flat across there to not allow someone, the inside defender, to undercut this thing, to be able to make a play on the balls, to stay away from him, to keep your distance from him. So they're just not on the same page and you get exposed. So you can see where he comes out of the break. 
Kirk comes out of this, what, on the 21, 22 maybe, right there? And he drifts to the 19, 18. I mean, that's just, that's a sloppy top of the route for me. And it's just these little details really get you exposed on third and short, third and medium usually. That's a tough one, man, because that's a big four points right before half. Could keep the drive going, chance for a touchdown. Instead, you settle for a field goal. So next one here, second and seven. You want to play quarterback in the league, huh? You think it's easy? You're going to come up here. You're going to point out the pressure to the bottom. Oh, yeah, yeah, we see you coming. Great. We're going to throw into pressure. It's going to be perfect. Oh, shit, we let someone through the A-gap. And he blasted my face. So you can see Trevor Lawrence pointing out. Look <laughs> at the right guard, right tackle. They see it. They're fanning out. We got you. This is perfect. This is what it looks like. Excellent communication. Oh, we're fanning. We're fanning. That just means these two are going to these two. Well, that's under the assumption that the center is going here. If the center is going back here for some reason, and I'm going to guess that he's wrong, but I'm not in their O-line rooms. If he's going over here, you can't fan this. You have to throw hot off the farthest guy. So this sure looks like a fan. This sure looks like he goes the wrong way. And this sure looks like really bad pass protection. Never want run free runners through the A or the B gap in drop back pass pro. And this is worst case scenario. The only thing worse than this is taking the snap from under center. But this is bad. And this is how you get blasted. Oh my God. Boom. This is the playoffs. Look at this. And the worst part is the center's not blocking anybody. God damn. Oh, that's close to a penalty, too. Right under his chin. Damn. That is a big hit. Massive hit. <laughs> and I, I think it's made worse by me because he points out the pressure. He's got it. Now, the throw's not there. and I'm not sure exactly where he's throwing it. But pointing out the pressure, the communication, everything but the block. And then look at him get blasted. What does he get hit five yards back? Boom. Holy moly. The pass pro was certainly wanting, especially inside out, but there were some issues a lot of the night. And it makes playing quarterback real tough. Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications, let it wash over you. I sincerely appreciate the support. Easy way to support the channel, but very impactful for me and what we're trying to do over here. If you want even more quarterback school content, you know about the quarterback school Patreon community. In addition, we're selling hats for a limited time. Get over there. The link is in the video description. We also have quarterback school courses, really the most in-depth content that I offer, probably the fa my favorite stuff that I create. If you're interested in learning more about specific elements of ball, you can think of tempos, RPOs, how to beat every coverage. Uh, we even have a pass pro course and an entire offensive system. So if you love the way that I talk and teach ball, you will love the courses. Get over there, check them out. The links are in the video description. And then finally, we have some free resources available. We have a free course on the passing quick game. We got a pass pro quiz, test your knowledge on the guys up front. And then we have a play calling tool. See how I think and utilize different personnel versus anticipated coverage to have the best potential passing concepts available. So if you're interested in any and all of those resources, check them all out in the video description. I appreciate the support for the channel. As for this video, let's get back to it. Another third and seven here. This one looks like another miscommunication. I'm going to say Kirk, who's moving from two to three there, he's probably running an in, although his footwork and body language makes me think option choice. And what I mean by that is with that little shuffle or bounce at the top, but he and Trevor Lawrence are just not on the same page. You know, the ball comes out a little bit hot. Where is it exactly? You know, back shoulder. You know, I think if I was 13, I would love to come out a little bit more under control, but that ball looks like it's worse than it is. I mean, that, that almost grazes his tricep. You know, he might even it might even hit him to be honest with you. Now maybe it comes out a little hot as far as fast, but you know this is now what the second time we've seen the number three here have an opportunity for a first down and just haven't been on the same page. And the reason why I don't think it's a true choice. So when he comes up, when he kind of shuffles his feet at the top here, that usually indicates option. So again, in, you know, turn around run out, run in, run to the post potentially, or slant. Most times when you're going to run up and just run like a short in, you're not going to, ah, 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 and then come in. That's a terrible drawing. Come in flat. Especially when you've got something out here who's doing something similar. When you see the similar type routes, they're usually both ends. 
because you wouldn't want to run a choice into this route and have this guy run out and then you're kind of running into each other. So just not on the same page at kind of a shocking rate on really crucial third downs. Uh, that's not a far throw, right? That's a less than 15-yard throw, 10-yard throw. Damn. To have that kind of miss, to not be on the same page as far as the velocity and the ball location. You know, even if he catches it on the 45, is it a first down? Like, I, I don't love running routes like that that aren't running towards the sticks. You know, running flat parallel to the sticks are tough. And just not on the same page and just kind of getting a little bit exposed in these tight window throws for meaningful down and distance. Next one here, third and 12. Rough one to the bottom of the screen. You can see they're kind of all over the place as far as their pre-snap process. And then this is there. It's just a little flat of a ball from Trevor Lawrence. And again, the, you know, I'm not saying it's an easy throw because it's certainly not. But I think with any more trajectory here, first of all, just look at the process here. So you can see Trevor Lawrence, you know, I don't I don't know sign language, but that sure looks like a signal for fake something. So and then they're relaying it out. We can't get our feet set. Time clock's running down, so he goes fake signal, clap, and now we're running essentially a middle field open quarters beater where we're going to come out here and then run this kind of sail action here. And the ball just comes out a little flat and doesn't give him a chance to kind of adapt or kind of fix his stem. I think the number two ends up running like a shallow back the other way. So it's there. I, I like the decision. It's everything but the ball and kind of the process is all over the place. You know, that you could easily call that a penalty to the bottom with the number one moving his feet like that. He's not set. And then Trevor Lawrence just rushes at a tick. You know, does he have to throw it right there? I like the anticipation, but if you're going to throw it, especially with the corner down here to the bottom turning his back, almost like two Manny. You, know, you can really lay that thing out to the sidelines. You don't have to throw it flat because that safety is not going to make a play on it to the bottom. So just kind of a little bit flat of a ball. Everything except kind of that pre-snap process. You can see here, very rarely do you want to be signaling right into your snap count. So a little condensed there right before the ball, and then that ball just comes out flat. Next one here. Nice little scramble run, third and six. I think this is a thing that sometimes I'll forget with Trevor Lawrence, especially because he did run the ball well at Clemson. He can run it, and they don't ask him to run it. I'm not sure I would ask him to run it either in quarterback design run, but he can scramble, and he can get up the field, and he got a big old stride, and he can go get you some tough first downs because there's nothing there here, and he really has to make somebody miss. So nice up in the pocket, and then this move, boom, get vertical. You know, a lot of guys right there, that's an open, that's a, nobody in front of you, NFL linebacker, linebacker slips, get vertical, someone hits you in the legs, and you get another five yards. Because essentially, you know, you're a unicorn out there. Big old tall guy, athletic, fall forward, get a first down. Happened twice in this game. On third downs, really nice job here from Trevor Lawrence. Just being able to, when you can bail yourself out with these kinds of athletic plays, good decision. They're going to get upfield in this kind of rush front have nobody you know, over the guards or center, you can move up in the pocket and just go take it yourself. Whoop, one move, fall forward, big first down. Just a really nice heads up play that allows you, it really alleviates pressure, especially when the pass pros feels like it's suffering, everything feels like it's tight, just go get it yourself. Next one here, second and nine, big play. Up top to the number two, miscommunication defensively from the Chiefs. Trevor Lawrence sees it. And delivers a beautiful ball down the field for a big chunk. So the vision here from Trevor Lawrence, the ability to create a little bit out of structure, move, reset your feet, drop a dime down the field on a corner. And again, this is all, for me, Trevor Lawrence and vision. So how this thing sorts itself out here, we're coming up and running to the corner. Well, technically there's outside leverage here. This shouldn't be there. But this defender kind of gets lost with his eyes and comes off for some reason to the number three. So who knows? I'm guessing he's making a mistake here, but he gets lost, comes off, and then Trevor Lawrence is able to kind of see this. Like he's he's got to go. He sees the corner pop open, resets his feet, and throws a strike down the field. So a lot of moving parts, mostly set up because Trevor Lawrence can see it, his vision out of structure. So no, 
See that number two defender up top come off on the number three right there. Trevor Lawrence sees it, takes advantage of the miscommunication, and it's a beautiful ball. It's just a really nice job. The whole thing from Trevor Lawrence to be able to feel the backside, move, buy enough time, put it on him, big chunk play, creative. You know, but certainly not something that you're anticipating being there. So got to go, see it, reset, deliver a strike right on him, big chunk, outstanding. This is a tough one for me. So we're down 10, seven minutes left, fourth quarter. The number two down here to the bottom is going to run what I'm used to calling a pump, kind of an out and up seam. And it's there, the ball's late, and the defender makes a play on it. So to me, you know, I would love to see Trevor Lawrence just be able to come back here and rip this with some anticipation. And when I'm saying anticipation, I'm saying that from the bottom down here, when you're going to come up, nod this thing out, and then come back to the seam area, and we're going to try to run this versus middle field open, this open safety, you're trying to have the route impact the underneath coverage, and then the quarterback is going to beat the safety. So you got to get it up and down before that safety can make a play on it. And this is one of those ones back in the day, like Peyton Manning used to throw these in his sleep with anticipation. Capital A, underscore, italicized, bold, everything. Now, this one, for some reason, he's just crazy late because it's there. And I, you know, I think he can make this throw with anticipation. He just doesn't hear for whatever reason. It's not the end of the world, but it certainly misses a big play. You can see him back there waiting on his back foot. Hitch, 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 hitch. To me, if you throw this with three and a hitch, one, two, three, hitch, throw. You know, you can get that thing up and down. Boom. That's too bad because that's a big chunk play. Down 10. You roll in, you got a chance to make a huge, big chunk. It's there. Everything is there but the execution of the throw with the anticipation from the quarterback. Again, still only down 10. Now we're balls just outside the red area. We're going to throw a turnover-worthy ball down here to the bottom on what I'm used to calling a 7-up. Really kind of a bizarro route. Really fortunate, again, that the defender can't catch the ball. This is just an unnecessary force. And again, I understand you're down 10. Eventually, you're going to have to take some chances. You're not going to have to take chances like this with six minutes left. So this just felt like a force. And, and again, I get it. You're down. You're going to have to make a play eventually. But first of all, I don't love the route. So to me, this route is this. Burst in. We're going to fake like we're going out and then up. You can see it's actually a better route up top by the same number one. Up, fake out, and then up. So to me, it, it's not a true, you know, I, I think of like true old school West Coast circus as this, and you're more putting a stretch on the corner. You know, you're trying to high load this corner. This is more like a, we're going to take a shot down the field. And I just don't like the fact that it feels forced here. So up, and then just, we, we don't need to make that throw. That's just one-on-one -on -one with the safety, jump ball. You know, it, it feels like we're trying to grasp too much when we don't need to. Again, that you know that route to the bottom that that can't be what they wanted. <laughs> that that is a that is a nasty looking route. Like he bursts in, up, looks over his left shoulder for like a second, and then goes up. Like who's he faking? It's just a we. I don't know. I I know Doug has better stuff than this. This this can't be how we wanted to take our shot into the red zone, and we're really fortunate it's not a turnover. And again, the the rhythm of this is a little bit better. I love his dovetail. You know, yeah, he probably doesn't have to move. But again, he's been getting smacked around back there. Buy enough time. Just just don't do that. Nice one here. A little scramble. Third and 10. This is a big time scramble. Again, he's got the ability to do this. I'm not sure how often you want to be lowering your shoulder like this. But if you're going to do it, do it to a little guy on the boundary. But this ability, run away from someone, lower your shoulder, go get a first. You know, maybe lower it a little bit more than that. But that's the, you can see the first down marker right on the 11. You got to go get it, get low enough. That's a big time run, man. This type of stuff, uh, I don't know, it might be hard to understand on YouTube on watching a video, fires up your teammates, your organization, more than damn near anything a quarterback can do because they're all in. You can't fake the funk sometimes. We're not going out there sliding, we're going out there getting it. Now, you don't want to do it very often. 
I'll grant you that. But sometimes you got to do it. And you got to go be a football player. And it's inspiring to your teammates. Love it. Next one here, tough, tough interception. So there's a lot going on on this one. Essentially, at the end of the day, the corner makes a really nice play. One-handed, beautiful pick. I think when you slow it down and look at it, you can kind of peel apart why and how it happened. Again, we're going to need to make a play. Uh, we probably don't want to be making this type of throw with what I'm going to say is a pass pro meltdown breakdown. This looks like just stick with crosser. And so it's five person protection. So again, we're always starting with the protection. So five person protection. It looks like they're running what I'm going to call stick here. A little flat and then a probably a go or a clear. That's where the ball ends up going. I think they pair it with like cross or something, whatever. It doesn't matter. Well, pass pro wise, we're hot. So we get this and this. Okay, so it's a better look from the back, but this needs to be a big duel from the right tackle. Big duel just means you set for the most dangerous. As soon as this linebacker types usually gets his feet into the first level of the defense, we got to set here and let the free runner be the widest guy. Okay, so that's the first part. The second part is if this is hot, you know, if you love this matchup, you throw it. I, I like it. The guy made a hell of a play. You live with it. You know, that's not the end of the day. I think it's easy again to sit here with the clicker and say, look at the stick, look at the flat. Okay. But more bigger issues for me are the pass pro. It's almost impossible to throw a route like this down the field when you've got a free runner through the A or the B gap. And now we've seen free runners through the A and the B gap a lot. Now, maybe the right guard is supposed to go out to the right. You know, and that's not on Trevor Lawrence. But again, we're going to be hot, right? We've got, let's let's just pretend, okay, because the center comes this way, that the right guard should be here. Okay, that we can live in this pretend world for a second. Well, then the right tackle is here. So he doesn't do a big duel. He's just blocking correctly. Well, then this defender out here is blitzing. So you can either throw the stick, the flat, or the go. The go is contested. The guy makes a one-handed catch. You live with it. But to me, at least at a minimum, there's a pass pro breakdown here. Rewatching it like this, I'm going to say it's probably the right guard as opposed to the big duel. But regardless, tough to play quarterbacks with free runners in your face. And that's a hell of a play. It can be all of the above. Last one here, beautiful throw. Now, this is how I would want Trevor Lawrence to play if I was had anything to do with his kind of consistent performance. To me, he's ripping this with great anticipation. And I get it. It's less than a minute left. You've got to play loose. You've got to let these balls go. We need big chunks. But he can play with this kind of anticipation. So to me, this is just dagger, an iteration of dagger down here to the bottom. Up and in. And we're going to get, essentially, it doesn't matter if you call these clears or seams through here. But when he lets this in go here, this in is way before he wraps in. So this, to me, capital A anticipation, certainly can do it. For sure. Capital A anticipation. Tight NFL window. we got condensed window. Ripping it down the field with some velocity and accuracy. So I'll pause this thing right when he lets it go. You know, he's separated right there. <laughs> he's separated right there. The in is right here. This is the window he's throwing into. Okay. Does it look? How's it look, coach? It looks con congested. He fits it. And again, I get it. It's late in the game. you got to make big chunk. But he can do this. You can see here that that's great anticipation. Arms are separated right there. The wide receiver's not into the in-break yet. Fit it in there. Beautiful. So just let this thing wash over you because this is how, in my opinion, how he should aspire to let it rip from the pocket consistently. Whoomp. Dunk. That's a thing of beauty. Watch the rhythm that he's playing with from the pocket here. One, two, three, hitch, go. And maybe you could make the argument that he's a little clicky at the top, right? There with some wasted movement. Probably exaggerated because he's a giraffe back there. But just keep that base. The rhythm of it, though, is outstanding. The ball, the velocity right on him, contested tight window. Hell yeah. So that is a wrap. Trevor Lawrence versus the Chiefs, tough L. Uh, I think think when you pull it apart, you can kind of see a whole bunch of little issues that together made it really tough to play quarterback at a high level. I love the way that Trevor Lawrence is playing. I think he's got a very special skill set. Dude can run it as well as spin it. 
and was dealing with all sorts of little details or weird nuances where you're not on the same page. I think it got kind of magnified with of some issues because of some upfront free runners. And so getting hit like that starts to impact your time clock, how you're playing the position, led to some maybe some errant misses that you don't see and some kind of bizarro decisions compounding the, cer- the kind of circumstances late in the game. But man, he's still got the ability to drive the ball down the field, to be super precise, to play with great rhythm. Now you're just looking for everyone around him to kind of elevate their game, to be able to protect him more, to be able to be a little bit more efficient in the drop back game as far as precision, as far as details, as far as the route running, the timing of some of these combinations to look for to take that next step as we move into the next year. So thank you so much for hanging to the end. I will see you next time. Have a good one.